All right, we're going to start with chapter nine here. Um, so this is, you know, the last third of the class. Uh, so, so chapter nine deals with what's called the giant planets. Um, let, let me just go over some terminology as well while, while we're talking about the giant planets. Sometimes they're going to be called the gas giants. Um, sometimes they're also known as the Jovian planets. All right, so, you know, just like the, the, uh, the inner worlds are also known as the terrestrial worlds, they're, they're, they're Earth-like worlds, um, you know, the ones we just studied uh, in, 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 you know, chapter six, six through eight. Um, the, 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 these outer planets, um, and in fact, this is, this, this is one of the moons of Jupiter, and this, of course, is um, the zones and bands of Jupiter, um, the, sur the surface of Jupiter. Well, sorry, <laughs> actually, that's, that's funny, I should say surface. Um, so, so that's one of the, that's one of the things about the gas giants is they don't really have a surface to speak of. Um, they are basically atmosphere that gets thicker and thicker um, and denser and denser, in other words, as you get towards the center. And the center is, you know, thousands upon thousands of kilometers, um, especially like in the case of Jupiter, as we're going to see. All right, so, so J Jupiter's uh, Latin name is, is Jove, and so sometimes they're called the Jovian planets. All right, so the, the, uh, there's the terrestrial worlds and the Jovian planets, um, which is, of course, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Uh, Uranus and Neptune, by the way, are sometimes called the ice giants that set to separate them. Um, and as we're going to see, the, the reason they're called the gas, the, the collectively, the four of them are generally called the gas giants. Um, and, and the reason for that has to do with their formation. Okay, so that's, all right. So beyond, as it says here, beyond the orbit of Mars, and you get this really low temperature. So, so you know, if you think about the origin of the solar system, um, the, the, the giant, the um, giant, cloud that, that formed our solar system, um, which was originally called the solar nebula, uh, had hydrogen and helium um, gas in, and, and actually, um, and, and that be, because this stuff was so far from the sun, uh, you know, it, this was relatively slow moving. Um, and, and, and the other thing that I, that I want to make sure that it is, is clear, um, when, when these four planets form, there's a lot more material out there. Okay, so it's it's a much it's a much larger volume of space, and so there was a lot more material out there to form these planets, and they're much much bigger than the terrestrial worlds, um, as as we're going to see. Um, all right, so they're composed mainly of um, gaseous. Uh, it, it, both gas, it's in the outer parts of the, of the planet, it's, it's gaseous material. And then it, it liquefies as you get closer and closer, but it's mostly hydrogen and there's some helium in there as well. Um, and then there's mixtures of um, uh, different compounds like, uh, for example, uh, methane um, and, and uh, ammonia as well, and, and even water even, uh, you know, H2O. Um, so, so Pluto, and, and we'll, we'll deal with Pluto a little bit later, Pluto, Pluto and, uh, and it's, um, th there's a whole host of planets out there, uh, or so, sorry, they're called, they're now called dwarf planets. Um, and that Pluto is the largest of them. Um, there's another one called Eris that is relatively this, almost the same size as Pluto. It even has its own moon. Um, anyhow, anyhow, that, that region is called the Kuiper Belt. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. This is uh, a very icy region um, that, that goes beyond the, the orbit of Neptune. So, so we'll, we'll, we'll turn to that in a different chapter. Um, the moons of the outer planet um, form little miniature, they look like little miniature solar systems of their own. Uh, Jupiter has, it's close to 70 um, and it actually starts to, you know, it starts to like beg the question, like what exactly is a moon? Because there's all sorts of material that is that is in orbit around Jupiter. Um, when you stop calling 
stuff on the moon, you know, it, it, it like it, it, the definition starts to break down when you get to smaller and smaller things. Um, anyhow, uh, you know, in other words, there, there's stuff that orbits Jupiter that, you know, resembles uh, asteroids, captured, captured asteroids. All right. And, and by the way, we'll, so between the orbit of Mars and Jupiter, uh, there is the main asteroid belt. And again, when we talk about the, uh, the, the, the Kuiper belt, we'll also discuss the, the, uh, the, the asteroid belt. All right. So that's, that those are different regions of the solar system. So um, Jupiter, as, as, as we said here, or, you know, as I said at the beginning, is the largest planet, both in diameter and mass. Um, its diameter, you could, you could fit more than more than nine Earths across um, the this, this, this surface of, you know, well, across Jupiter. There's no, remember, there's no actual surface. Um, you can get the density, of course, by, by uh, taking the mass of the planet, dividing it by the volume. Now, how do you get the mass, right? How, how do we know the mass of Jupiter? Well, of course, Jupiter has satellites. Um, in, in fact, even in the year um, 1610, uh, Galileo took his, his tiny little primitive telescope, primitive in today's standards, certainly, um, and noticed that there were four satellites, um, four moons of, of Jupiter. He recognized them as moons. He even named them. Um, and nowadays they're called the Galilean, the Galilean satellites. Uh, they, they, they turn out to be the, the, the four largest moons of Jupiter. We'll, we'll have a lot to say about them. Uh, but because they're in orbit around Jupiter, um, you get, uh, you know, di you can measure distance information, the distance the, that the moon is from the, from its host planet. Um, and you can, and certainly you can measure the period of, of the, of these planets. Um, the period is actually the easiest thing to measure. Um, figuring out the distance to the planet is a little bit more complicated. Um, but, but the, the, the basic idea here is, um, you know, that, Going back to the to the time when we re, we used this idea of angular size, um, if you, if you know the angular size of something, um, you can you can get uh, distances from that. At any rate, um, and we so so you can get the mass from the modified version of Kepler's third law. You can get the volume by by you know again, um, you you can you can figure out the size of the object by. Um, Knowing its its angular size, from you know from 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 looking at it from the Earth, and you know we've had lots and lots of telescopes looking at at, at Jupiter over over many many years, and uh, um, so so we know its angular size very very well. And of course, its angular size changes as it orbits the Sun, you know, because we see it at different distances from from us. And of course, we're moving around the Sun too. So, um, but any rate. Uh, you can get the angular size, and and uh, you can from that you can get the the, the radius, um, and then uh, you, you use the volume equation because it's it's large enough to self gravitate into a sphere. So this, of course, is the um, the volume of a sphere, and so you can get the density. Now the density of the Jovian planets. Okay, so the you know the the gas giants, or also you know I'll use. Those two terms interchangeably, the gas giants and the Jovian planets, um, the, the, you we're going to find that the density is much, much lower than the density of the terrestrial planets. Um, so so we'll, 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 uh, we'll do, I'll do some examples and show you that. Um, in, in fact, in the case of Saturn, we're going to find that the density is actually less than that of liquid water. Um, so, so this is what most of the, the, the atmospheres of the satellites are made of, and we knew this long before we went. We sent spacecraft, um, and and by the way, we've sent spacecraft to orbit um, Jupiter. Um, we 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 in the early seventies, we and, and even in the sixties, there were flybys of Jupiter, um, where the you know the spacecraft just took pictures as it traveled by. But then um, in in the in the nineteen nineties. Um, we actually sent, sent a satellite that orbited for many, many years. Um, it was called the Galilean satellite. Um, 
it, you know, it was a space probe that orbited Jupiter for, for a long, long time, took lots and lots of, of, of pictures, gathered lots and lots of scientific data. All right. Um, so, so th this is, and, and we knew this, but even before, okay, that the the uh, b before the the spacecrafts got to Jupiter, we knew that the atmosphere was composed of hydrogen, helium, and then, um, like, if you th if you look at the periodic table, there's you know the part the part of the periodic table where there's carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, um, and so that turns out to be of the, the, the CNO, right? So carbon, nitrogen, oxygen is found everywhere in the universe so that, you know, when you have this, or the original um, uh, nebula, the original nebula, there's going to be plenty of carbon, plenty of nitrogen, plenty of oxygen. And of course, the hydrogen and the, and the helium come from the Big Bang itself. The carbon, nitrogen, and, and oxygen come from, the, from dead stars. And, and, and most stars, when they die, uh, produce uh, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. It's, it's only the really massive stars that produce the lower parts of the periodic table, the really heavy stuff like, uh, like iron and, you know, all the way down to uranium, um, which is why, you know, things like gold and uranium are relatively rare compared to, you know, very typical carbon, nitrogen, and, and, and oxygen that you find everywhere all over Earth, right? Um, and the, the reason for that is, is it was more abundant. So, so the first molecules to form, or not surprisingly, were um, hydrogen, hydrogen compounds of these, these three, um, the, these three uh, atoms that, that, that are, you know, po populate most are, are more abundant, I should say, in, in the original gas clouds. Um, so, so, you know, when, when four hydrogens join carbon, that's methane. When three hydrogens join nitrogen, that's ammonia. And then, of course, when uh, two hydrogens join oxygen. So these, these are molecular bonds. Um, now, I mean, this is not a chemistry class, but um, you should, this is really important to astronomy. Um, and, and in fact, one of the labs that, that we do is, uh, is, is building atmospheres um, around, around uh, certain, you know, around planets. And what, what kind of atmospheres can, can a planet hold on to with its gravitation? Um, all right, so anyhow, uh, the, the, these are the things that you find in the in the gas giants in all the gas giants and different different amounts. Uh, you, you, in fact, the coloration of, of Jupiter uh, has to do with the different amounts of of uh, of, of um, methane compared to you know the other stuff. All right, so here, let's go to the next slide. All right, so uh, this and so this is um, I'll, I'll do a calculation this a little bit later but uh, so, so this of course is the density of Jupiter um, notice remember the density of liquid water is one gram per cubic centimeter so Jupiter is just slightly more dense than fresh liquid water remember it's fresh fresh water it has a density of one uh, salt water is a little bit more dense um, but anyhow it's 1.3 grams per cubic centimeter and that's very typical of the gas giants, right? When we get to Saturn, we're going to find it's even less than the density of liquid water, right? So as we com you know compare that to the Earth, um, the of uh, the the other terrestrial planets have a density around around five. I mean, they're, they're you know some of them are like uh, Mercury is the closest one to this. Um, Venus is a little bit less, and then of course. Uh, Mars is is the it has the least um, uh, you know the, the 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 smallest density, uh, but but it's still it's still a rocky world, right? So this these the things that are in the in the fives and fours um, grams per cubic centimeter are considered rocky worlds. Th things that have a density of you know around the density of liquid water are considered uh, gas giants, or in the case of um, of Neptune and and and, uh, 
and Uranus, they're, they're 